Yo, what's up everybody? Hobo Mackey here. Uh, out here, middle of Kansas, uh, just past Leonardville, Kansas. Um, let's see, just a bunch of uh, what you expect Kansas to be, actually, you know. Just on this little uh, highway here, Highway 24, hitchhiking. Not a whole lot of traffic going by just yet. Don't really expect any traffic to go by, but I think the very little traffic that does go by is likely to pick me up. So I feel like I'll get a ride here eventually. Um, right, and I've been slowly kind of walking, but I've been walking for days now and, uh, you know, hoofing it a lot every day and it's been hot and that hot and humid starts to get you uh, chafing in between your legs. I'm, I'm not actually physically worn out, but I got that chafe, it's got bad chafing going on and that's kind of a deal breaker. I'm, I think I'm going to start carrying gold bond powder with me anytime I'm doing long distance uh, walking because, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, Deal breaker, you know. You can't. You, can, you just go ahead. You don't want to waddle uh, long distances, you know. But uh, so I am chafed up a bit. So I'm trying to slowly walk. And I got gold bond powder, and I'm powdering myself like literally like every 30 minutes, um, and trying to keep it dry down there. So that he, the heat and the humidity just causes uh, the, the rash, the rash in between the legs there. But. Uh, so yeah, just been uh, hitchhiking from Kansas City. Had the uh, had a little family gathering going on up there, which went well, and um, ended up getting me my new pack. My uh, got me a new pack here. It's a small day pack, so I'm going extra minimal nowadays. Um, uh, this is actually a pack that was an attachment to my old pack. So you see, so it's the same color and everything as my old pack. It actually zipped on to the back of the old pack, which gives you extra storage. And then you have a little, you could zip it off as a day pack. I didn't need all that much storage, so I ended up stashing it at my sister's place. And she's been holding on to it for me all this time. And uh, since I was there, I went ahead and grabbed that little pack. It's a nice little pack and all. But I, you know, I ended up having to get rid of a bunch of things, like my blanket and um, uh, the main things the blanket. And uh, so I'm going extra minimal now, and uh, basically just down to basically three layers of clothes. I got two hoodies, a thick hoodie, a thin hoodie, and then a base layer, long sleeve. And then I got um, some long underwear, um, some jeans actually, not the best middle base layer. But then I got my uh, army pants here with the cargo pockets. And I uh, really love these pants. I got them for like four bucks at the uh, thrift store was out in um, some army base out in Missouri uh, uh, anyway so yeah the army base is a good place to go for go through the gift shops and find army clothes because a lot of times they're good durable clothes especially for uh, um, but I have been a little chilly the last couple of nights even though the weather has been in like the mid 60s some part of Colorado I'm actually flexible and uh, it's even colder up there so um, I'm probably gonna have to do something break down and get a jacket or get another blanket or do something like that but we'll figure it out um, so yeah trying to go up to Colorado you know get that Rocky Mountain high if you know what I mean and uh, also uh, I think the economy is great up there and I plan to find some work uh, maybe do some odd jobs or just work a place for a couple weeks, work at another place for a couple weeks, and you know, just uh, do a lot of work in, a lot of smoking, um, and uh, try to save up some money over the summer so that way I can just go for the winter and maybe uh, relax for the winter basically uh, and do whatever. You know, I mean, I'll probably go like west, west, southwest or something like that. So I'm generally thinking maybe go to some deserts. I do have a car coming by and I'm gonna put this down because it looks weird and I only have, I only have like one car every like five minutes so my chances of uh, I, I, I really need to improve my chances of getting a ride with every car that I see so give me just a second
like how he gets way over on another lane. I've noticed that people do that a lot when they're hitchhiking. It's like, I'm not gonna run out in front of you, you know, I'm not a wild animal. I think I got another car coming eventually here. It's up the hill. I can see it coming. But uh yeah, sometimes you feel like a wild animal because uh they'll actually slow down, you'll think that they're gonna pick you up. And then all it is is like a family and all of them are just gawking at you and then they speed up and go away. It's like I'm not a zoo animal, people. That shit used to piss me off. Yeah, it's a work truck there. They don't usually pick you up. Probably working. Probably got the company truck or something. They're probably, uh, I thought that one had a decent chance. I can actually kind of prejudge the vehicle of whether or not the likelihood they're going to pick me up. But uh, at this point. So where was I? Shit, I forgot. Maybe talking about Colorado. Yeah, I'm real flexible in what part of Colorado I'm going to. Um, uh, the last guy I hitched with actually was saying that the western side of the Rockies had a lot of work over there. But I, I'm pretty sure, I've looked at the uh, unemployment statistics and there's un the unemployment is like super low, uh, especially in Boulder and even, you know, of course in Denver as well. Um, so I'm real flexible on what part of the I'm going to just try to find somewhere where I can get a job real easily. They'll pretty much hire anybody. Uh, you know, when you go and tell them basically you're a hobo and stuff, you need somewhere that's gonna be likely to hire you, you know. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, the same guy, he was a cancer survivor, his, he was actually here taking his dad uh, to the hospital for skin cancer. Um, and I've noticed that, they, you know, quite often the cancer survivors will pick you up. And they're, you know, they're the type of people who've lived on the edge where they know what it's like to, you know, um, no longer be with us anymore. And they, uh, they understand how precious life is. And then when, when you feel like, uh, you know, your life's so bleak and you're about to lose it, and then you come out of it, and, uh, and all of a sudden you're alive and free again. It just gives you a whole new perspective on life. You know, anybody who's been through a traumatic you know, experience like that understands that. And those kind of people are be more likely to pick up a hitchhiker because they're more willing to live life. They want the experience. They want somebody new to talk to. Uh, they don't. They're not so fearful of things. You know. Um, and you know they understand that life is precious. We're all here for a limited amount of time. Live every day, you know, live it, you know, do something, go, you know, whatever it is you want to do, you know, whatever makes you happy, you don't, don't live in fear, fear is an awful thing, place to be, you know, it's, uh, sure, I mean, it's, have a healthy amount of fear, you know, don't be totally ridiculous, you know, but, uh, understand when things are just irrational fears, um, and quite often things are just irrational, if you're hitchhiking is an irrational fear, generally, um, I've just never had an issue. I, I had nothing but great experiences hitchhiking. Just never. And uh, of course, I have recently was hitchhiking with a guy. And he said that uh, about 10 years ago, a hitchhiker uh, tried to rob him um, with a, a knife. And he said it didn't turn out very well for him because he had a gun. Uh, and I was like, well, I'm surprised you pick up a hitchhiker, man. I appreciate it. And uh, of course, getting out, <laughs> I was the first hitchhiker he's picked up since then. And when he dropped me off, man, he was super sketched out that I was going to try something on him. And like, I could tell he was reaching down. I, I think I made like a little slight movement or something. Maybe I was, you know, I was just like, hey, thanks a lot you know, for the ride. And maybe I made a slight movement. And yeah, I could tell he was like, you know, getting a little like, give me that look like, you, we going to do this or what, you know? Um, so. Moral of that story is, you know, got to be careful picking up hitchhikers. Um, uh, I, I hate that. I hate that uh, that, that kind of guy really ruins it for everybody else, you know. I would like to just beat that guy's ass, you know, because he really ruins it. And I can't no longer say that, oh, it's totally safe to pick up hitchhikers, you know, because they're, hey, but you know what, that same thing. 
can happen to anybody at any time, anywhere. You know, that guy is obviously on drugs, uh, you know. So yeah, use your use common sense and stuff like that. But you know, end of the day, you know, you gotta, you gotta live your life, you know? Things, bad things will happen, you know? Uh, just, you know, I'm saying don't let you know, live, uh, uh, you know, live fearlessly. But yeah, bad things are gonna happen, but that which does not kill you will make you stronger. It'll make you a better person. So even if you got robbed by a hitchhiker, you're probably not gonna lose your life over it, you know? Um, I was actually surprised that when I was at my first truck stop in Kansas, I got a ride from a solo female, which is actually pretty rare. Um, I've had two females pick me up a couple times, and I did have a solo female offer to pick me up one time uh, recently. Um, but yeah, she was definitely a different type of chick, man. She was dipping, she had a dip in, and uh, she a uh, country girl, and uh, she did mention something about you know the Second Amendment and. So that kind of gave me that hint that she's probably packing, um, and she's in the army, and, uh, but, you know, it takes a unique kind of woman to pick up a hitchhiker by herself, you know, but, uh, you know, I, I, I admire those kind of people, you know, I feel like they're different, and they're interesting, and, you know, she didn't exactly have balls, but she had balls, you know, I like that about somebody, uh, I don't care what, who you are, you know, um, ooh, running on minutes and 39 seconds I had a police officer just roll by me a minute ago and I had my thumb out I didn't know he was a, uh, a uh, officer and then when I seen he was an officer I put my thumb down and he didn't stop I thought for sure he was gonna stop and at least say you know do you need anything or anything like that you know or check me out run my ID I've got a car coming or maybe not I got a little bit of time before they come but uh so basically hitchhiking is kind of a great law in kansas but pretty much they don't enforce it um so as long as you're not in the interstate or certain places all right i got a couple cars coming well, one's a truck he's not gonna pick me up so I'll probably keep talking through that one. Um, yeah, I, I like to do a little smile. Just a little smile. Hey, I'm friendly. You know, I'm not a serial killer. But uh, that's all you can really do is to get a thumb out and then uh, hope. I, I'll bet you I think I'll get a ride. I think somebody. So when you're out here in somewhere in the middle of nowhere, fewer cars go by, but each car that does go by, they're more likely to pick you up. Whereas, you know, a busy place, there can be four lanes of traffic going down the road, just whoo, 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 and nobody's gonna pick you up forever, you know? Um, so just because there's less vehicles coming out here doesn't mean that it's gonna be less likely for me to get a ride. But we'll see. I've never been out in the middle of Kansas, and you never know. Uh, these uh, Kansas small town country farm folk, you know, they're, they're going to be in that small town me mentality where they don't trust outsiders and they don't, they probably don't even like outsiders. They just, all they've got is the news media and what they see on the news and they live in their little bubbles kind of, you know, and uh, they're going to be, they're definitely going to be a certain amount, you know, most of them probably going to be a little fearful of a transient t type like myself. So, um, I don't know, it could be hard. Um, but of course, I think that you'll find um, exceptions, and I think that, uh, that people should eventually give me a ride. Like I said, I, I have to be prepared to wait up to like six hours for a ride. You know, uh, it's probably take, uh, it could take that long. I don't think it'll take that long, but it could. You gotta be patient when you hitchhike. Very, very patient. Um, it's just a matter. Of, it's just a waiting game. Um, I've kind of been slowly walking, um, but 
and I kind of stop once in a while because I really can't walk very much. And you know, if I didn't have the chafing issue going on, then I would just walk the whole time. And then uh, when a car comes, I would turn turn around and face them and try to get hitched. But there's really no point in that because I mean, it's a, you know it could help you get a ride, and that you know maybe you get further down the road and you pass a major intersection where more cars are coming. You know, but for the most part, I'm going to get to Colorado via hitch, not by walking. It's just too far. Kansas is way too big. And uh, right now, I just cannot. I, I, you know, I, I, it's stupid for me to walk any further. Um, it makes my chafing issue worse. You know, i got to kind of chill out the day. But I still want to stay on the move and keep on hitching. And, you know, it's a good ride to get me a long way. And then maybe another good ride to get me a long way. I'll eventually get there. I'm not too worried about it. All right. Well, call that a vid. Appreciate it, everybody. See y'all next time.